Welcome to Lyons Township High School AP Physics and today we're doing an example involving an electric circuit. So um, here's a circuit and um, for, for uh, ALT classes I threw in some resistors that are diagonal. Uh, so um, what I would suggest you do is pause the video for a sec and copy all this down. Um, if you so desire, you may copy all this stuff down too. Uh, so I'll get out of the way and let you copy that and then I'll kind of talk about it after that. So here you go. Okay, now, uh, so we got a circuit here with a bunch of resistors. Some are series, some are parallel to each other. Got a 120 volt source, maybe it's your wall, wall outlet. And we then have, I've written down basically all the rules of the road for circuits. So um, really briefly, we've got series circuits. We know in a series circuit that the, any series component, the current's the same because current is the flow of things. They're electrons. So if the resistors are in series, if the electrons go through one resistor, they have to go through the next one. So uh, the currents are the same in all the resistors. The voltages add up. It's voltages like electrical height. So if you go up 120 volts, let's say, and you come back down to the bottom of that power supply or that voltage source, you're going to lose 120 volts. Um, so the voltages add up as you go. And then the resistances add up. Okay? Um, and we've talked about all this in a lot of detail in class, but I'll, I'll mention it quickly. For parallel, the currents add up. So example, this current plus that current plus that current is going to equal the current in this wire because these electrons and these electrons and these electrons, they're going to meet up there and then continue flowing. So current adds up for parallel circuits. Voltages are the same for parallel pieces of a circuit. So for instance, this voltage, that voltage, and that voltage, they're all the same uh, because the electrons fall the same height whether they go through this path, through that path, or through that path. And finally, to the determine total resistance for a parallel part of a circuit, you add up the reciprocals of the resistances and then you take the reciprocal of that. Um, basically, the, the, the consequence, that's a consequence of the idea that as you add resistors in parallel, you're actually reducing the resistance of your circuit. And then we have Kirchhoff's two rules for circuits. So we have junction rule, the total current into a junction is equal to the total current out. So for instance, this circuit right there, if I told you this was one amp and two amps and three amps, that the current out has to be one plus two plus three or six amps because current is things, it's the flow of electrons. If the electrons don't just disappear, okay? And then, uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule, the total change in voltage around a closed loop is zero. So if I pick a starting point in my circuit and I take any path that gets me back to that starting point, okay, then the total voltage will be zero. Usually uh, voltage or power supplies are voltage gains and if you're going with current through resistors, you're losing voltage, so that would be a positive voltage. And like if I went, let's say this little triangle path, these two would be voltage drops and they'd, all three of those numbers would add up to zero. Okay, so there's the rules of the road. Um, now, uh, as far as what we're gonna do is real simple. We're gonna find every current and every wire and every resistor and every voltage drop for every resistor in this circuit, okay? Now, for a circuit like this, you've got all the resistances, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to reduce our circuit. We are going to simplify it um, into, into easier and easier circuits to deal with and then find all the information about the simplified circuit and then work our way back up to this more complicated circuit. So first thing you look for is what can I, what can I put together? Well, hopefully it's pretty obvious that these three resistors are parallel to each other. Okay, so we're going to add those up using the one over REQ and find the total resistance of these three. Hopefully you see that even though this one here is at a diagonal, these three are still parallel. And by the way, parallel is very simple. If you go into a parallel branch, if you're Joe Electron and you go into a parallel branch and no matter which resistor you go through, you come out the same spot, that's parallel. So for instance, you're Joe Electron and you, you start here, whether you go through top, middle, or bottom resistor, you end up there, that's parallel. That's the same thing here. If you start here 
you're either going to go through the left resistor, through that diagonal resistor, or through that right resistor. In all those cases, you end up here. So these three guys are in parallel. So we'll start with those two. For adding these up in parallel, you do the 1 over thing. So we've got 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 40, which common denominator would be 2 over 40 plus 2 over 40 plus 1 over 40. That's 5 over 40. That's 1A. Flip it over, you got 8. So that resistance is 8. This one, you do 1 over 12 plus 1 over 48 plus 1 over 48, uh, which is 4 over 48 plus 1 plus 1. That's 6 over 48, which is 3 over 20, 1 eighth. Uh, flip it over. This is also 8. <laughs> so this is a total of 8 ohms, and that's a total of 8 ohms. So I will redraw the circuit now with those in there. So we have our power supply. That's 120 volts. Those three resistors up there add up to 8 ohms. These three over there add up to 8 ohms. You still have our diagonal 24 ohm resistor hanging out, and you still got our 5.4 ohm resistor there. Okay, so but now we're down to four resistors, a lot easier. Um, we'll simplify that further. Um, these two are in series now. Okay, if you're Joe Electron and you go through this resistor, you have no choice but to go through that one. So for series, we just add them up, so 8 plus 8 is 16. So I'll draw that down here. Now, by the way, I'll make a note. It's absolutely important you draw these out. Okay, there are a few people that can go with that very original circuit and figure everything out in their head, but for most of us mortal people, we need to draw some intermediate steps, and we're going to be finding all the information out about the intermediate steps. So uh, 8 and 8 and 16. So we've got a 16 ohm resistor. Uh, we've got our 24 ohm resistor. And then we have our 5.4 ohm resistor. So now we're down to three resistors. And no, they're not all in parallel. They might look like they're all in parallel, but they're not all in parallel. Uh, these two are, though. Check it out. If you're Joe Electron and you enter this junction, whether you go through the 16 ohm resistor or the 24 ohm resistor, you end up at that spot right there. From there, you then go through the 5.4 ohm resistor. So that guy is in series with these two. But we'll add up these two first. So you're going to do your 1 over 16 plus 1 over 24. Uh, you get, um, let's see, uh, what would that be? Common denominator would be 48. So 2 over 48 plus 3 over 48 is 5 over 48. You flip it over, you get 48 over 5, that would be 9.6, all right? So if we redraw that, that resistance is 9.6 ohms. And now we have your 5.4 ohm resistor. Aha! Well, now we got a real easy one. These two guys are in series. Your Joe Electron, you go through there, you have to go through there. You just add those up. And we have a total resistance of 15 ohms. And we have a 120 volt source. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to drop the black pen. All right, I got a red and I got a blue. All right, in all these, we're going to make the voltage is blue and we're going to make the currents red. Okay, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to use V equals IR ad nauseum here. Um, along with some of these rules here, okay? So I'll kind of mention those as we go. All right, so V equals IR. We got a 120 and we got a 15. You divide uh, 120 by 15, you get, I believe, 8. So our current, I got to use the red, will be 8 ohms. Now notice how I draw the current. Current goes through the wires. It is, they are things, they're the flow of electrons. So they are, I will draw them as long arrows that go through the wires, okay? Now, I'll stick with the red pen. The total current is gonna remain eight amps. So I now wanna find each voltage. And what I'll do is I'll put the voltages in little boxes, so as in blue, okay? How do you find the voltages? Well, here's our equation, V Ohm's law, V equals IR. So I'm gonna take eight times 9.6. If you do that, you get 76.8. So I'll put that in a blue box, 76.8. And then down here, if you take eight times 5.4, you get 43.2. So those are the two voltage drops for those two resistors. Now, by the way, if you add this and this, you're gonna get your 120, okay? Now, since I got the blue pen in my hand, I'll keep that over here. 43.2 for that guy right there, so I'll write that down, 43.2.
These two are in parallel. That means they have the same voltage, the same voltage as they do as in equivalent resistance. So they both have a voltage of 76.8. So I'll kind of write that in the middle here. That's 76.8 volts. In other words, if you're Joe Electron, you go through the 16 ohm resistor or through the 20 ohm resist, 24 ohm resistor, either way, you're going to lose 76.8 volts. Now, by the way, we still, Kirchhoff's loop rule still holds here. If you start here, and this is a 120 volt source, if you go up 120 volts, and let's say we pick the top path, you drop in 76.8 volts. If you take 120 minus 76.8 in your calculator, you're going to end up with 43.2. You drop through that 43.2, you end up back at zero. That should always work out that way. All right, now, um, now I'll go to the red pen. I know the current down here already. I already found that. That's eight, okay? But when it gets to here, it splits up, okay? So for the top one, I'm going to use V equals IR. I've got V and R. So if I take 76.8 divided by 16, I get a current of 4.8. So this current here is 4.8 amps. To find this current, you could either do the voltage divided by that resistance. OK, you're going to get a little over 3. Matter of fact, I tell you the answer is 3.2. How do I know it's 3.2? Well, I know that Kirchhoff's junction rule says I have 8 amps going into that point. I better have a total of 8 amps coming out. Well, 4.8 plus what gives you 8? Well, this has to be 3.2 amps. So you can, you can either divide V by R, or you can use Kirchhoff's junction rule for that. Since I got the red pen in my hand, I'll stick with that. So up here, I know this current is 4.8. I know this current is 3.2. They s s combine into a total of 8 amps. Okay. Now I'll go to the blue pen for our voltages. I already know that voltage is 43.2 in the box. That voltage is 76.8. I'll put a box around there. Aha! These two voltages combined are 76.8. Uh, now, it's pretty obvious since they're both the same resistance, they'll share the voltage. They'll each have half of that. Um, but if you didn't know that, you can just take V equals IR. I times R. If you take 4.8 times 8, um, you get 38.4. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, 38.4 That is half of that. So this is 38.4, and this is 38.4. OK. Now I'm going to do a little moving the board up and down here just for a second. I'm going to keep the blue pen in my hand, because I'm going to use voltage. So the bottom resistor is 43.2. So I'll write 43.2 volts there. All these guys are all in parallel. They all have the same voltage as that which is 38.4. So what I'll kind of I'll kind of write this way. If you put a voltmeter here, you're going to get 38.4 no matter which resistor you pick to, to measure the voltage of. For the top or top little uh, pack of resistors, they're also 38.4 volts total. So same thing, if you put a voltmeter anywhere across any of those things, you're going to get 38.4 volts. And then this guy we know to be 76.8. So I'll write that down here. He's 76.8 volts. All right. We have now figured out every voltage for every resistor. Now let's go back and find all the currents. So I'll start with, with the power supply. I know that I have 8 amps running through that. So that is 8 amps, OK? And then um, we already found this current going through the 24 ohm resistor to be 3.2 amps, OK? I know 4.8 amps goes that way. 4.8 amps goes that way. Aha! Now it gets to here and it splits up. So um, I'll just use V equals IR again. There's the V for each of my resistors. So like to find this current, you would take V divided by R, 38.4 divided by 20. If you do that, you get just under 2. You get 1.92 amps. That guy's identical. He's going to have the same current, 1.92 amps. This guy, he's going to have, he has twice the resistance, so he's going to have half the current. Or if you take 38.4 divided by 40, uh, you get 0.96 amps. So 0. 
4.96 amps. And a side note, that plus that plus that has to equal 4.8, and you can check it out in your calculator, it will. Those currents recombine to be 4.8 amps there. Okay, then that current's going to split. Uh, the current that goes this way will be V over R. So if I take 38.4 divided by 12, I get 3.2. So that will be 3.2 amps. Um, these currents will each be 38.4 divided by 48. So this current here and that current there. Oh, not there. Sorry. Up to here will be, if you divide those out, you get 0.8. So this is 0.8 amps, and this is 0.8 amps. Now, I, I originally mentioned, hey, I want the current in every wire. What about right there? All right, well, you have this junction right there. You got 4.8 amps coming in. You got 3.2 going that way. This has to be 1.6, because that and that have to add up to 4.8. And sure enough, you know, 1.6 then gets to here and it splits further into 0.8 and 0.8. Right here, okay, we're going to figure out what the current is in this wire. Well, you have 0.8 and 3.2 going in, so this current has to be the sum of those, which is 4. And then, of course, your 4 plus your 0.8 turns into 4.8 amps, and then your 4.8 and your 3.2 add up back up to 8. And you have just determined every current and every voltage for that circuit. So um, I, I hope that was helpful. Again, I will the one big picture thing I will reiterate to you, please draw the simplified circuits and find the easy stuff on those. And then you translate it over to the big circuit. So that's the number one most important thing in this is to simplify your circuit down, find the simple stuff and then go back and find the, the information for your complex circuit. So I, thought, I hope that was helpful, and thank you very much.